If you're new to the channel, I'm Dan and this is Sailing Gear. I have another long running YouTube channel called Sailing Bella Chandra and Sailing Gear is a brand new channel I created in order to test out new, used and forgotten sailing and cruising gear in order to help out new and existing cruisers giving honest and unbiased opinions and letting cruisers know what works and what doesn't. Be sure to check out the show notes below for links and information on all the gear and topics being discussed. We've had lots of issues with outboard motors and dinghies since leaving Nova Scotia. Now, after cruising for about a year and a half, we're on our second outboard motor, and most of our friends who are full-time cruising are also on their second motor. Outboard motors are clearly not meant to be used every single day. Outboard motors do need constant attention to make sure they continue running and getting your dinghy from the boat to the dock to the beautiful beach and back safely without failing. Depending on your motor, there are several maintenance items that you really need to pay attention to. Of of course there's oil changes with four stroke motors and the shaft oil on any outboard motor. We've had to change the propeller more than once due to minor impacts and recently we've had a spun prop on our 5 horsepower 2 stroke Tahatsu. Before leaving Nova Scotia, we purchased a Tahatsu 3.5 horsepower four-stroke outboard motor. Unfortunately, that outboard motor only lasted until about the Dominican Republic, and that's when it started to die. It was a slow death, and we did end up replacing our outboard with an older, used two-stroke Tahatsu five horsepower motor, which turned out to be a much better motor. We uh, had to come here to buy a motor, actually. We had to get a new Tahatsu, because remember we were talking about our Tahatsu, and it was in bad shape. Yeah, we've been having some problems with our little Tahatsu. It was really great for the first two years. And back in the Dominican Republic, we were driving the thing and just out of nowhere, it, it, it quit on us. And we've been fussing with it. We went to a mechanic, we changed some parts. And we know that outboard mechanics can be pretty pricey, so we're trying to do it on the cheap, using the internet and self-diagnosing the thing. But we've got it to the point where it's really like it's hit and miss and it's not reliable so we need something that works and we were able to find one on Craigslist. Just as important as having a reliable dinghy, you will need a reliable outboard motor if you plan to cruise full time. Also, I cannot stress more the importance of bringing spare parts for your outboard motor along with you. Recently, our propeller bushing failed. This is also known as a spun prop. When you remove your prop to inspect it, you'll see a soft plastic or rubber bushing layer between the prop itself and the teeth which hold the prop to the prop shaft. If this layer appears damaged or chewed up, you may be in need of a new prop bushing. Props like this are built this way as a failsafe in case the prop were to run aground. This bushing would fail before something more serious, like chewing teeth or stripping gears or even breaking the shaft which spins the prop. We found someone who changes prop bushings, but unfortunately he didn't have our bushing in stock. But we did find a replacement prop for our Tohatsu at Budget Marine. It's also a good idea to carry a spare impeller or seals for your gearbox in case you ever have to replace either. I recently replaced the seals in the gearbox of our new Tohatsu two-stroke motor. As when I changed the gearbox oil, only water came out. That was an indication that the seals needed to be changed. Fortunately, my zinc was in good condition and there was no corrosion. Tahatsu is a good brand to carry here in the Caribbean, as there are more than one island that carries parts for Tahatsu. However, they may not have the parts you need, so it's a good idea to bring spares for your motor before leaving home. Our beloved 5 horsepower 2 stroke Tahatsu died on us while in Cayo Largo, Cuba. The timing was right, as our next stop was Havana, where you can only tie up at the dock. Our motor's top and bottom crankshaft bearings failed, causing a loud knocking noise and a massive reduction in power. This repair meant a complete engine rebuild. I priced it out in Key West at over $800 US, so we decided to sell off the motor for parts, and instead we bought a small Minn Kota trolling motor for $100 to get us through while in the Florida Keys, as we intended to haul out shortly thereafter for hurricane season. These experiences over two years of cruising with Tahatsu products is making me seriously consider avoiding the brand altogether. We've had a lot of trouble with our dinghy, just keeping it on the water. We have a dinghy from a company called Bombard that comes as a kit. You can assemble the dinghy and disassemble the dinghy for travel. And it's very convenient in some ways, but in other ways we found it difficult to make it last, especially if you're living aboard full time and cruising like we are. We use our dinghy virtually every day. We use the dinghy to get our groceries, to buy our fuel, to get our water. We walk the dog just for a walk on the beach, to visit other boats. I mean, it's the family car. Our dinghy is constantly being used and sometimes abused, and it's important to have a 
dinghy that can hold up the exposure, the elements, and the constant use. The ideal dinghy for cruising in the Caribbean would be made of hypalon and have a rigid bottom, or a rib. That would be with a fiberglass or aluminum bottom and kind of a V-shaped bow and a very strong construction. Our dinghy is PVC. It does have a hard wooden bottom that's wood panels that are connected together. Uh, but the bottom is inflatable and a lot of people do have dinghies like this that are assembly dinghies and they do cruise the Caribbean with them. But like us, they have to do a lot of repair. We've tried multiple repairs and temporary fixes to keep our dinghy transom connected using expensive PVC glue with only temporary success. And our transom has mostly been held together with ropes and bungees for months while we've struggled with our dinghy slowly failing. We've had to glue this joint here several times on both sides and continuously the force of the engine and just the age of the glue is not holding up and the transom really just becomes loose at those spots and literally separates. If you look closely, I've also created two additional transom supports using PVC pipe on an angle to counter the force of the 5 horsepower outboard motor, an idea that I borrowed from most of the rigid bottom dinghy transom designs. Our dinghy, being the fold up type, could not have been built with supports like this and also be able to fold up for storage. Also, if you look here where the paddles are attached, this attachment point has undergone a lot of wear and tear, and we don't really paddle all that much. It didn't last very long. It's just the salt water kind of ate it away. The original attachment point here is gone. I've created some temporary fixes here using some PVC pipe and some stainless steel wire. It's enough that it'll work to get you out of a, out of a tight spot if your engine dies, but it may only work once or twice and then I've got to repair it. It's really just uh, maybe bad design or bad materials in the original construction of the dinghy. Final Fix was recommended to me as the best dinghy repair product on the market. A Canadian product which comes in a caulking gun cartridge. This product was recommended to me by several other cruisers who use it and swear by it. I had seen repairs done with Final Fix and was impressed. And it's slightly cheaper than other repair kits so we thought we would give it a try. Now, with the transom glued, we are very happy with this repair. It seems to be very solid, and I'm quite convinced that Final Fix is bar none the best dinghy gluing product on the market. I want to talk about my Black Diamond Ascender. This is the device I use when I'm going up the mast. If you don't have one of these and you're going up the mast, it's a really good idea to pick this up. Typically, I ascend on one halyard tied to my bosun's chair, and I wear also a climbing harness, and a second halyard is tied tight to the bottom of the mast, and I use this ascender with that second line as a safety line. So if anything were ever to happen to the halyard or to the bosun's chair, I would fetch up on this ascender and it will keep me from falling. There's a trigger here. You can open this up like that, and you can see there's a groove here. You can fit it in on this side like this. Once the halyard's in the groove, you close this trigger. And if you look closely, there's little teeth here. Those teeth will catch the halyard and prevent this from sliding down. You close this on the halyard, it catches the halyard, and then it can no longer move down, only up, because it hinges this way. So it allows the movement this way as it moves up, but not movement this way because of the teeth. This originally was designed for solo climbing. And how that would work is instead of at the bottom attaching this to your harness or your bosun's chair, you would run a line off the bottom of this clip to a loop that your foot would go into. So you'd have a loop with your foot at the bottom, attached to the bottom of this, and then as you slide this up, you move your foot up at the same time. If you have a second one on another halyard, you can move that one as well. So you go one, then the other, and then one and the other, and you technically can climb up two lines doing it using this motion, or technically up one line if you do it like this, one above the other, but it would it's very difficult to do. It would be kind of uncomfortable, and it's never something I thought I would want to try because uh, coming back down would be kind of hard is you'd lift this up, slide it down, do the other one, slide it down, and every time you're shifting your weight back and forth between two halyards, it just seems awkward, and um, it doesn't free up any hands to brace yourself if the wind picks up or you lose your balance and you have to grab onto the mast. You're not gonna be able to do that if you're holding onto these things tied to two loose halyards, which are free moving. So it's still much safer and 
more practical to have someone bring you up the mast with a winch on one halyard and use this as a safety like I do. But it is possible to use this in other situations. It is a rock climbing climber's tool and device, but if you're planning to go up your mast and you want a good piece of safety equipment, I'd highly recommend uh, an ascender. This ascender is from a company called Black Diamond. I purchased it on Amazon and it had a very good rating and the reviews were excellent and would hold my weight and then I could trust my life to it. And I have been for, you know, three, four years now, so. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this new channel sailing gear and make sure you check out the show notes below for links and information on all the topics discussed. If you want, you can leave a like or a comment and please subscribe. Just go below, look for that big red subscribe button, press that button and be sure to check out our other channel on YouTube, Sailing Bella Chandra, where you can become a Patreon member and support both channels. Thanks. See you later.